Starship continues its progress toward a near-future orbital flight, while Blue Origin continues its fight against NASA's HLS decision. All the while, SpaceX keeps acquiring more launch contracts, businesses, and boats. And we finished with that big announcement I promised you guys a few months back, so make sure you stick around to the end. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News. I'm back from surgery, so we're gonna catch everyone up on what SpaceX has been up to since our last episode a couple Fridays ago. But first, a word from our sponsor. Folks, are you getting an uneasy feeling about the future? Uh, you mean the rising gas prices and growing inflation that's driving up the cost of everything? Yeah, I'd say so. You feel something big is going to happen soon, and it's not going to be good. Millions of Americans feel that way right now, and they're quietly stocking up on emergency food while they can. Do you have enough emergency food to get you through a sudden crisis? Whether it's the next economic collapse, natural disaster, hack on our infrastructure, or pandemic? A lot of those things going on lately. If not, check out My Patriot Supply. They're the nation's number one preparedness company, and they've served millions of American families. Right now, you can save 25% off their popular four-week emergency food kit. You'll enjoy a hearty breakfast, lunch, dinner, drinks, and snacks, totaling over 2,000 calories a day. Plus, this food stays fresh for up to 25 years in proper storage, so it will be there when you need it. Go to preparewithspace.com to claim your four-week emergency food kit. You'll save 25% if you act now. That's preparewithspace.com. After challenging his engineers to stack Starship Super Heavy on the orbital launch mount by August 5th and more or less meeting that deadline, Elon had the two stages of the vehicle separated just minutes later on August 6th. The upper stage Starship was first taken back to the high bay located up Highway 4 at the construction yard, where its three sea level and three vacuum engines were removed and presumably sent back to McGregor, Texas, SpaceX's rocket engine testing facility. And SN20's heat shield tiles were also inspected and color-coded by the degree of damage they sustained. Then on the 11th, the vehicle was pulled out of the high bay to make room for the arrival of Booster 4, which was removed from the orbital launch mount the previous day. After reaching the high bay, Super Heavy's engines were also removed beginning the morning of August 12th. And just as a reminder, Elon told us the plan was to finalize the ship's heat shield tiles, provide thermal protection to the booster's engines, work on the ground propellant storage tanks, and build the quick disconnect arm on the launch tower. Two weeks, which is today. Another cryo shell and cryo tank were delivered to the orbital launch site last week. The tank farm briefly came to life for the first time this week. And work has been progressing rapidly with the tower's QD arm and propellant delivery pipes as well as with the tower's rocket embracing arms, which Elon says will be attached soon. He also twatted on Thursday last week that the booster and ship will return to the pad on Monday, just finishing off some plumbing and wiring, which is easier in the high bay. The first orbital stack of Starship should be ready for flight in a few weeks, pending regulatory approval, of course. I wouldn't hold your breath, it is the government after all. But SpaceX is killing it on their end, at least. Starship was actually delivered to the pad a few days ahead of schedule on Friday the 13th, and was placed onto Pad B in preparation for a series of stress tests on the 18th. Road closures for those tests have been delayed due to Tropical Storm Grace, though they are currently scheduled to begin on Tuesday. In the meantime, work continues on everything else going on at Starbase Texas. Parts for the next Starship and Booster, 21 and 5 respectively, have been spotted at the construction yard being moved into place. <laughs> Check out Lab's new rover cam. I was on the phone with Lewis the other day and we were having a good laugh at his unorthodox behind the scenes strategies to provide all of us with this view. SpaceX is working on enabling public access to their restaurant they have on site. I can't imagine what the wait time to be seated will be once all you nerds make reservations. No cuts, no butts, no coconuts. Elon is also entertaining the idea of speaking at this year's International Astronautical Congress in October to provide us with a Starship update. Last time he spoke there was in 2017. You know, it could be helpful given Starship is pretty far along in development, but continues to undergo modifications as new data about its systems is analyzed. For example, Elon just informed us that there's a slight error with the forward flap design. The moving section is needed for control, but the passive section is counterproductive, so its new design rotates the forward flaps more to the leeward side of the vehicle and further up the nose. So basically, they'll be making these fins smaller and moving them about right here. I know, they should call the first Starship with this setup the USS Jackass. The Government Accountability Office released more information, some of it redacted, about SpaceX's HLS win for NASA's Artemis program to use a Starship variant to land astronauts on the moon. According to the GAO decision, SpaceX will use a propellant depot in Earth orbit to fuel the lunar Starship's tanks on its way to lunar orbit. Said depot will first need to be filled using 14 tanker Starships spread over a six-month period. 
Once at the moon, the Starship Lunar Lander will enter a near rectilinear halo orbit, dock with NASA's Orion capsule to receive the astronauts and take them to the moon's surface. On the way back, the astronauts are returned to Orion, and Starship may be able to return to Earth orbit to refuel for the next mission. SpaceX began receiving its almost 3 billion Musk bucks from NASA to make it happen. However, those payments have been put on hold again until November 1st because Blue Origin is still pissed about losing the contract. So they are delaying the whole going to the moon thing again by suing NASA in the Court of Federal Claims, but discreetly under seal, of course. Yet they were very transparent about their beef with the agency's decision when they twatted these diagrams that explain why they believe SpaceX's strategy is immensely complex and high risk because it will launch from a spaceport that does not exist at Starbase, Texas, that I've stood in. Also because of the high astronauts will need to descend from to reach the lunar surface, I'm personally still in favor of using a trampoline instead of pulleys, and because it will require more than a dozen missions for a mission to the moon to work. Admit it, Elon's inevitable clapback is why you're a fan to begin with. He responded to this attack by pointing out Blue Origin's exposed, shriveled up balls, and then proceeded to steal their mission architecture and integration lead for their human landing system. If lobbying and lawyers could get you to orbit, Bezos would be on Pluto right meow. 16 flights to fill the 1200 ton tanks of a lunar starship is extremely unlikely and twice the maximum amount needed. Possibly only four tanker flights will be needed given the lunar lander's lack of flaps and a heat shield. However, even if 16 were required, it's not a problem. SpaceX did more than 16 orbital flights in the first half of 2021 with Falcon and has docked with the space station over 20 times. As we have clearly demonstrated up to this point in this episode, SpaceX is pretty competent at what they do. They're on top of it. Elon even believes they can make it to the moon perhaps sooner than 2024. If anything slows their progress down, it's going to come from bureaucratic incompetence in the government. Like how NASA said it wouldn't be able to make the 2024 Artemis timeline set by the previous administration due to their inability to acquire new spacesuits, in part thanks to the number of vendors they have working on them. 27 different companies to be exact. So SpaceX may just end up doing their job for them. Uh, what, what would you say you do here? Speaking of the moon, Intuitive Machines has contracted with SpaceX to launch their Nova C-class lander and rideshare payloads aboard a Falcon 9 into the lunar surface in 2024. SpaceX's next Falcon Heavy mission with the Space Force has been confirmed to launch in October of this year and will be expending its center first stage booster while landing both side boosters on the two East Coast drone ships. Before that, we had the Crew Dragon Inspiration 4 mission in September, the first dedicated private passenger mission to Earth orbit. The commander, Jared Isaacman, wrote that they've been tracking their capsule from the start, and a few weeks ago saw it fully assembled with a new cupola installed. But the next mission is CRS-23, a Cargo Dragon mission to resupply the space station, slated for August 28th. And SpaceX has purchased and outfitted two new ships, named Bob and Doug, to take over East Coast fairing recovery operations. The company is also acquiring Swarm Technologies, a satellite data startup to expand the Starlink team. They'll become a direct wholly owned subsidiary of SpaceX. According to a deal filed with the FCC, Swarm will transfer control of its satellites and ground station licenses to SpaceX and will give SpaceX access to their intellectual property and expertise. Well, that's all the SpaceX news I have for you today. Again, make sure you keep watching to hear the exciting news I have to share. My appreciation goes out to those supporting these episodes through Patreon and YouTube's join feature. Until next time, Godspeed. Before summer began, I informed you guys that I would have a big announcement to share in a few months. Well, now that time has come. Some of you have noticed since that announcement that I've been linking unlisted videos from a second channel to the end of these episodes. Per requests I have received since 2019, I have brought back the Cloud Liquor name and turned it into my very own personal play space. And without even mentioning the channel verbally or listing any videos on the channel publicly, thousands of you have decided to subscribe and for that I'm very grateful. But now I am pleased to tell you that Cloud Liquor is officially live and new content will be posted on the regular. And the best part is, we'll actually be licking some clouds. After a two year hiatus due to a lack of equipment, I finally got my aviator wings back along with some really cool new toys. So we're going to be having some deep conversations about life, geopolitics, and of course SpaceX, all while tasting the sky. But we'll also be doing much more than that. This was the original plan back in 2017, but of course then SpaceX and the news started a whole new genre on YouTube and gave me a target audience, you guys, so I changed the name to something more appropriate. But 
I really decided to start getting cloud liquor back up and running when poo was really starting to hit the fan last year and we began seeing how plagues, politics, and lockdowns were affecting our country's space programs. And, you know, they still are. In fact, ULA CEO Tori Bruno just became the latest overstepping prick to mandate vaccines for his employees. So I highly recommend that all of his employees, engineers, what have you, vaccinated or not, resign today and go apply to SpaceX. Honestly, you should have done that years ago anyway. So back in April of this year, I told my members that this summer would be spent introducing all of you to a taste of this new content with these messages at the end of my videos as a means to advertise Cloud Liquor before uploading them exclusively over there. One of the little changes I'm bringing to Space Eccentric is I'm gonna do little monologues at the end of my episodes, just like Fridays. And I'll only be doing this for our episodes until I get this, the Cloud Licking YouTube channel up and running. A soft opening, if you will, but also to weed out the week. So for those of you who had the mental fortitude to stick around, thanks. Proud to have you on the team. Our community is now stronger for it. And we need to be strong if we're going to try and be the voices of reason protecting what we all love. Because no matter how hard you try, you can't separate politics and space. Those that demand it of you are really only saying keep politics they disagree with to yourself, which is dishonest, dangerous, and derp. I've been saying for a long time now that the unfortunate truth is that the two will always be intertwined, and failing political leadership is a threat to humanity's journey to the stars. Culture influences everything, and that includes space. You might want to keep space separate all you want, but the fact of the matter is that space exploration is dependent upon the days of our time. So if you'd like to join ranks and stand guard against the ideals that threaten our heavenly ambitions, or maybe just take a fun ride with me on Spaceship Earth as we live out the rest of our allotted time, subscribe to Cloud Liquor. That channel is also where I'll be interacting with you guys on a more personal level because I refuse to support Jack Dorsey and Mark Zuckerberg. I walked away from those platforms a year ago and you know I gotta tell you, I don't miss them at all. But since YouTube is also run by big corporate fascists, I highly recommend you find both my channels on Rumble where the value of freedom is understood and none of my content has been censored. This video, YouTube censored by the way, will be posted on Rumble this weekend for those of you who have been inquiring about it. I've been chatting with Rumble's vice president and they are 100% on board with what we're building. And I'm also currently working with Odyssey to get Cloud Liquor on their platform as well. Of course, SpaceX will operate on all sites as usual, so you don't have to worry about missing any SpaceX news. But we're going to be having a good time at this new spot. So I'll see you over there.